One thing I didn't realize until after I posted the last video was that you can actually add an output with a negative index, and this output won't show up as an extra output port on the node. We can see this on the RBD configure SOP. If we hit enter in the viewport to enter the node's viewer state, we're switched to the negative first output. And if we dive inside, we can see that there's a separate branch for visgeo like we had in the previous video, but the output index is set to negative one. So let's jump up and try to implement this ourselves. I'll go to the object context, drop down a new geometry object, and I'll call it demo. And dive inside, and I'm gonna create a rubber toy, because it's my favorite test geometry. We won't need a shader. And right off the bat, I'm gonna create a subnetwork. Dive inside, move these inputs out of the way, create a little bit of room for us. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just drop down a null. There's a little placeholder input. I'll call that input geo. And we'll give that a black color. And the only thing I'm gonna do to the geometry is drop a normal sop down and set it to point normals. And we can check that in the viewport by turning on the visualizer and they look good, and I'm just gonna pipe that out to our output, and I'm gonna leave that output index at zero. Off to the left here, we'll create our visualizers, and the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rainbow color based on the Y position of each point on this model. So we'll create a point vop, call it color height, dive inside, give us a little bit of room, and I'm gonna drop down a relative to bounding box vop, plug the position into P, and make sure the input's set to the first input, and then I'll use a get vector component to grab the second component of position, which is the Y, and pipe that into a set vector component. And we're just gonna use that to set the first component, which is the we're gonna be the hue in a HSV to RGB VOP. And we plug that into color and we see we get a rainbow that goes from bottom to top. And the next one I'm gonna do is I'm just going to visualize the normals as color. We can do that with an attribute swap. Set the source to N and the destination to CD. When we visualize that, we can see that the normals are showing up as color. Now we'll just drop in a switch, plug both of our false color visualizations into that, and finish it up with another output SOP. I'll give it a better name, like capital visualize. And instead of leaving it at index one, let's change that to negative one. And if we hop up to the top, we can see that we only have one output, which is great. And now we can start configuring our switch. So I'll head over to edit parameter interface, and I'm gonna hide all the input fields right now, making them invisible. And then let's dive back into our node, push this window off to the side a little bit, head over to our switch and just drag that switch slider onto our parameters list. I'm gonna rename this parameter to display with the label of display and change the type from integer to ordered menu. Then I'll head over to the menu tab and add a couple items. The first one I'm gonna add is output, which is gonna be the actual final output of our node. Then I'll add one called height for our height rainbow and then another one called normal for our normals visualized as color. Once I hit apply, we'll see that our switch gets linked up but since we have three elements in our menu and only two items in our switch, we'll need to subtract one from this to make sure that our switch stays in sync. Let's hop up and give our switch a test. Select our node and we actually don't see anything changing and that's because we haven't implemented our callback yet when we changed the menu item. So let's go back into the edit parameter interface window and under the parameter tab, we'll start entering our callback. I'm gonna say kwargs node, which is the current node, dot set output for view flag. And in the viewport, I wanna view output zero when we've selected the final output menu item and the negative first output for any of the other items since those are all just for visualization. So to do that, I'll use a ternary operator and say negative one if kwargs script value does not equal output Otherwise, return zero. So let's give it a try. We'll hit accept, and when we select any of our visualization items like height and normal, it switches us to view the negative first output. One thing to note with this is that unlike using an output with a positive index, we actually can't get to the negative first input from the right click menu. So we do have to add this callback in ourselves. And that's it. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching.